Welcome to Friday Sews, everybody. I haven't done a Friday Sews for a while, have I? Um, so, thank you for taking the time to watch. Um, I hope everybody's well. It's a bit gloomy here today, but um, not raining at the minute, so we should be grateful for that. Um, what have we got today? It's a bit of a slightly different Friday Sews, if I'm honest, in that... Um, I haven't sewn very much, but part of the Friday sews is also talking about plans or um, other things sewing related and a little bit of life thrown in. So um, that's what today's going to be about. Um, so I hope you'll stick around. Um, I'm wearing today, this is a Hope um, dress from Stylark, um, just with a ready to wear cardigan that... I really like because it's nice and snuggly. Um, apologies for the mess of the room. I'm, well, let's come on to um, the live stuff first rather than saving it to the end. Um, I know not everybody's here for the live stuff and so that's absolutely fine. And I would also say that um, if you are not interested in hearing um about health or medical issues, um, I will put a timestamp here now um, to tell you where you can jump forward to so you get onto the sewing stuff. Um, but for those of you who might, and several of you have, and thank you very much for sending messages, uh, wondered why I'd been a little bit absent over the summer months, probably. Um, it's because I, well, a few weeks ago, I had some surgery. Um, I'm not going to go into lots and lots of detail here. Um, I am happy, if you ever meet me in real life, I'm quite happy for you to ask about it. I just don't think that YouTube is the place that I want to particularly talk about it. Yeah, so I'm not going to go into masses of medical detail. Um, but what I will say is that... Um, once I found out that I needed surgery, um, I I wasn't feeling ill, I wasn't unwell, I had no pain, but my mind started wandering and I just couldn't focus on anything. Um, other than that, I felt fine. I had been busy working up until the end of June um, and then I was away at the beginning of July for another week's work. So I'd been really busy and then coming back from that, um, I just found that I couldn't settle to anything. I might do 15 minutes and then think, oh, I need to do that. Oh, I need to do that. So I wasn't dwelling on the surgery. Um, I just couldn't keep my concentration on anything for very much. Um, apart from knitting was a good one in the evenings. I just sit down and, and knit, but that's a different video. So all of this has meant that over the summer I've sewn very little. And then I had surgery towards the beginning of September. And then after that, I wasn't allowed to move heavy objects um, while I was recovering. Technically, I still am in recuperation. Um, I'm aware of my limits. I'm, I'm not in any pain much now. I'm getting around. I can move. I can do that. Lifting is the problem and bending and stretching. So one of the issues with that is that I can't lift my sewing machine or overlocker off my cutting table because it's all in one space. So um, finding a space to spread out fabric to cut it has been an issue. And also um, I, I tire if I'm standing up for too long or, you know, I have, just have to take a bit of care and that's fine. I have all the time in the world for recovery and I want to do that properly. But um, cutting out big sheets of fabric, it, it hasn't been possible. And I'm also not allowed to iron for a while I should be just about I'm all right just about all right now to do little bits but in the first few weeks um lifting an iron was out of the question as well so I have a huge pile of clothes waiting to be ironed I've tried to live in things that didn't need ironing um or iron one thing or a couple of things and that's it but the pile is massive and I like ironing it's not an excuse um I just know that it's not a good idea so, um, we've not been able to move things, cut things, cut fabric, 
um, or really sew things for an extended period of time. Um, I was a bit stymied, but after the first couple of weeks of recuperation, I started to feel like I wanted to do something. So let me tell you about what I have been doing um, in the past couple of weeks, because I certainly got a lot of sojo to get out there now. Um, what I was able to do was very gently and over you know a couple of days to print out and prep a couple of patterns that I want to sew. The first one is the Nepheline blouse by Vivian Shaochen, I think. Apologies if that's not how you pronounce the name. I've never heard it said, but um, out loud. Um, I saw this and I just absolutely love it. I think it's gorgeous. Um, a kind of slightly oversized blouse, beautiful uh, fold details on the sleeves, a choice of necklines. I'm going to do the lower neckline with a ruffle, which is unusual for me. I didn't think I would like that, but I do like it. So the pattern is printed, and um, but because it's quite oversized, um, I want to make a twirl or whether wearable or not, but I do want to make a twirl of it first. Um, and my first thought was that I would make it, make the twirl in this fabric, which is a viscose fabric. It is a bit sheer um, in white, just off-white cream with black spots um, that I got from Abacan online a couple of years ago. 18 months, maybe? Um, so I spread it out and then I realised that <laughs> I had didn't have the full amount because I had cut out at the start of the summer before I knew anything was going to happen. I had cut out of that fabric the Paddington top, um, which is in a bag there waiting to be sewn up. Um, and... So I didn't have enough fabric to do the Nepheline blouse as a twirl, which is a real shame. Um, and the Paddington top, I, I printed it and I had the paper pattern cut out a long time before. I think it was even for So Frugal that I had it cut out for. And then um, I put it aside for because I couldn't concentrate reasons. And I've gone back to it now and I think it's I've cut a size that's way too big. And I don't know why, but like it's not that because I've lost weight recently, it's because I think the original one I cut out was going to be too big for me anyway. And I don't know why. I will sew that one up, um, but it it's more of a spring summer type thing. So I might just put it aside and put a note to myself to attack it early next year. It might even be a so frugal make next year because um, it's a free pattern and the fabric's been in the stash for a while so let's see. Um, so I'm rummaging around my stash now for fabric to make, probably not wearable to all because I do want to make sure that the shoulders fit right because if I've got a billowy blouse that's fine as long as the shoulders fit right. Um, if the shoulders are too big, everything is just wrong. So the Nephilim blouse is on the cards to make coming up in the next few months. I have it in my head. I want to make it in a beautiful silver grey linen. I can't explain why. I just have it in my head. I want it in a beautiful floaty grey linen. Um, so when I'm off on my travels, I'll be looking out for that. I'll keep an eye out for it. If not, I'll find something else. So that's on the cards. Tea break. Now the second thing that I was able to print and piece together is the Brooklyn jacket from Charm Patterns. You'll notice that they're both short, so there's a blouse and a short jacket. And I didn't feel able to piece together anything big, but small ones like that I could do on the sofa on the coffee table. Um, so yes, I really like this little short jacket. I think they're a good style for me. Um, and the 
real advantage about charm patterns is they do lots of cup sizes and they are very size inclusive. Um, now I had intended to make um, some kind of little jacket um, to take with me on holiday, um, which I was supposed to be going on at the beginning of September. Um, that didn't happen. But it doesn't matter, it will happen another time. But I do still want to make um, a little jacket. Now, I, I'm not a fan of a denim jacket on me. I find uh, anything that's got a high collar around here, I just don't like. I feel like my neck is quite short. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I've missed two hairdressing appointments as well due to one thing and another. It's driving me mad. So anyway, um, yes, because of a short neck, a um, collar, um, I just feel it a little bit overwhelming and I find denim often are just a bit too restrictive. So I'm not massive denim. They look great. It's just I don't like wearing them. But um, I thought that this might be quite nice. It looks quite formal in the pictures that Gertie has because you know, that's the style that she's gone for. But I think you could do this in any kind of style. I love the little Peter Pan collar. Um, so I am on the lookout again in my stash for something to make a toile. Um, I've made a couple of, everything I've made from, from Gertie's in the past has eventually come out right. Sometimes it's a bit more of a fit than, than others. I generally have to, to do a forward shoulder adjustment on everything. Um, and a narrow shoulder adjustment. So with a jacket like that, I'd really like to just do a fit toile to see what needs to, to be altered and make sure I get the right waist for me as well. So that's another thing that I should like to make. And there's one more thing that I wanted to share with you, which is kind of a work in progress, which is something that I started before, um, well, towards the start of the summer again, I was inspired by a lot of online um, images that I saw. Um, and whilst my overlocker and sewing machine is threaded with white thread, so I don't need to do anything to it, um, I thought I would try and finish this. So I'm nearly there. I have to hem it and it needs ironing, pressing. Um, and then it needs putting away because, again, it's not really an autumn winter wear. But um, I, I've made uh, this T-shirt. Definitely it's pressing. It's not, I've not been anywhere near an iron with it. Um, so I've based it on the Badian um, T-shirt that I've made a few of because I really like that kind of sweetheart neckline. And then I added in some broderie anglais uh, sleeves um, which I've managed to fit in and I've got a little bit of a poof at the top now I know what will happen when I pull this out next year these won't be in style anymore and it'll be a bit of a waste but anyway um, I had a few minutes at this over the last couple of days um, just trying to get it stitched together so I'm definitely getting back on the sewing course um, which is great so that's my only work in progress um, and that's nearly done. Apart from um, yesterday, I was able to make a start, or the day before, I was able to make a start on my Sew Up Cycle 22 uh, makes. Now I will put a link here uh, to the video that I did for the vlog tour which is hosted by Becky Notes from the Sewing Room and Karen So Little Time um, and I'm sure many of you have heard about this uh, before if not you know you can check out their their YouTube channels or my video and just see what it's all about but essentially um, I had two dresses that I don't wear anymore or hardly um, that I want to upcycle into something else. They're both jersey as it happens. And this here is the one that I was doing a little bit of work on yesterday. Um, so essentially because they're dresses with wider skirts, there's fabric there that I can salvage um, and they have sleeves. So yeah, so 
the next couple of weeks will be finish my white top so I can put it away, uh, finish this sew up cycle top and start my other sew up cycle make and um, I'm really looking forward to getting those done because I do, I think upcycling is important. I think, you know, I don't know if you saw there was a uh, Simon Reeve was travelling in America, in the Latin America the other week. I'll see if I can find the link, I'll put it down below. Um, and he was in the middle of the desert in Chile and just happened across, well, I'm sure it was found for him, but there is a massive landfill site in a Chilean desert which is just clothes that it sounds like companies pay to ship to Chile and Chile distributes some of it to people who need it and the rest of it just get chucked into the desert. I mean that's appalling. So I think upcycling and trying to be more sustainable is definitely the way to go. Um, so I am looking forward to being able to make even a tiny little contribution that means I don't have to go and buy a couple of other garments. So, yes. Um, let me just check if I've got anything else to tell you. Um, no, not specifically. I have, um, unfortunately, one of the uh, side effects of um, not being able to travel very far, or I can't drive at the minute either, um, it's online shopping. So um, I have a tiny little bit of a fabric haul. It's not massive. It should have been bigger and I can explain why in the next video. So um, yes, I'll do a fabric haul for you coming up um, in a few days. Um, and it may be that, that you know, you might have some ideas about what I'm going to make with some of the fabrics because plans chopped and changed and I think I've confused myself a little bit. So Yes, I do hope you have a great weekend. Hope you get some sewing done. Um, and I also hope that you would pop by uh, in a few days time and see what fabric I've got. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. I've noticed for some reason I'm creeping ever nearer to the thousand subscribers, which considering I didn't think I'd get 10 uh, is amazing. So if you haven't subscribed, um, perhaps you would um because a thousand would be just crazy um anyway thank you so much have a great weekend and i'll see you all soon take care